Then we have the next speaker. Um, yeah, he's the Dutch Dexter, maybe. <laughs> Dexter, the, the series. Um, yeah, his name is Nick van der Laan. Let's, let's, w let's welcome him with an applause, too. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's going to tell us something about blood, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is, is your, your slide is here. Okay, well, Nick, the floor is yours. Thank you. So I'm a PhD student at the University of Amsterdam. And there I investigate fluid dynamics. And uh, I investigate fluid dynamics uh, together with Daniel Bon. And we do this about blood. Why? Because we want to apply it to bloodstain pattern analysis. And that's why we're working together with the Netherlands Forensic Institute with Carla de Bruyne. And what I'm going to show you here is uh, why we do this and how. But first, I want to point your attention to our favorite dark hero uh, and bloodstain pattern analyst, uh, Dexter. Um, right here, right now, he's uh, on a crime scene investigating what has happened, and for that he's using the so-called stringing method. He has all these strings coming together to determine where the victim was when the crime happened. This is not reality, too bad. But uh, as we look at the picture, the uh, uh, all, the, all the strings come together very neatly in one single point. Well, in reality, this is not the case. In reality, it's a big jumble of strings, and we have to determine where the, exactly the middle is. In addition, um, the bloodstain pattern on the background, well, I've never seen it before. Um, if I have to define this bloodstain pattern, I would have to say they use a ketchup bottle, squeeze it, and spray it onto the wall like this. So, what patterns do they actually do this analysis on? Well, such kind of patterns we call the impact pattern. Why? Because they're created because of an impact, like a hammer striking a head, or at least uh, a volume of liquid blood. When that happens, droplets disperse everywhere through the air, and when they hit a wall, they'll form patterns like this. And if you look uh, at the left side, you'll see the droplets having a directionality to the left. And if you look at the right side, you'll see the droplets having a directionality to the right, which means that most probably they come from one central point. Now I got an uh, example for you. This is our victim of today. Um, let's, let's call him Daniel. Daniel is hit by uh, a hammer, blood flies everywhere, but Daniel disappears. And we want to know where was Daniel when that pattern was created so we can reconstruct what has happened. So we choose any number of stains available uh, on the wall and um, we look which way they go and then we took, take a little bit of a closer look at where uh, at, at the blood stains. And from the width divided by the length, and we take the arc sign of that, we can determine the angle the droplet hit the wall with. And if we know that for all these droplets, we can string a line back from those stains, and where they come together, we'll say, okay, this is our origin. This is where it came from. And we can do this with real strings, just like Dexter, or we can do this uh, with a computer program, which looks really neat, but we have a problem, because right now, we're assuming that the droplets fly in a straight line. Well, they don't. Droplets fly in curve lines. Like if you throw a rock, it will eventually come down again because of gravity. So we're not taking gravity into account. So what does this mean? We'll have a deviation. If you draw this straight line and you go further away from the wall, this deviation increases. And you're actually overestimating the height of your victim. And we already measured that if you're just one meter from the wall, it's about this, this distance from a wall, we can already have a deviation of 45 centimeters. That can be bigger than the difference between the sitting and standing person. So what can you say about the position your victim was in? What can you say about what actually happened? Well, in this case, not much. So what we are trying to do is to take gravity into account with this calculation, because we want to determine this curve trajectory. But to do so, we need two extra parameters, namely the volume of the droplet and the impact velocity uh, 
of those droplets. Well, the volume we can determine fairly easily. We've got a dried blood stain on a wall. We take a 3D scan uh, of that uh, droplet, and we'll get a volume back. So yes, we, we can determine that. However, the impact velocity is a little bit more difficult. And that's my main focus, my main research in the University of Amsterdam, to uh, create a relation, an equation, which couples the stain size of our droplets to the impact velocity. And the principle is fairly easy. When a droplet hits the surface under a specific speed, it will spread. The faster it hits the surface, the further it will spread. Now, we also need to take the volume into account, because the bigger the droplet is, the bigger our stain. So, on a university, we've been um, doing a lot of experiments. So we let a lot of droplets fall, we film them with a high-speed camera, and we determine how far they spread. And as a physicist, I don't only want to use blood, I want to have this, uh, this universal equation, which is always true for each liquid. So we also use water, we use glycerol, and eventually we developed a theory. And what you can see right here is that the theory is our dashed line, and our data points overlap with these dashed lines very well. And in that way, we were able to couple this, the size of our, of our stain with the volume of the droplet and the impact velocity. However, these data are just for droplets falling straight down. And we just saw that I if you have an impact pattern, they all hit the wall under an angle. So we need to take this angle into account as well. As, as a droplet falls under an angle onto a surface, it will create an ellipse. And once more, you will have this impact angle, and we have the width and the length. So we were able to implement this into our final uh, equation. Now, this equation, it, it looks complicated. It actually is complicated, but don't worry. We just have to fill it in. And as we fill it in, we say to a computer, OK, give me back my velocity. And we are able to. So, yes, we can determine the impact velocity. Of course, now you want to uh, see, OK, if you can determine the impact velocity, can you actually be much, much better in determining where the blood came from? Can you uh, draw these, these curved lines? Well, for that, we went uh, to the Netherlands Forensic Institute. And they've got these big cubicles over there. And they allowed me to go in and play a little bit uh, with blood, splash it around, uh, make these impact patterns. And we just took these hammers, put two to three milliliters of blood down. Uh, for that, I usually use my own blood. And we pull the hammer back. And the hammer's attached to the spring, so we release it. Bam! Impact pattern on the wall. <coughs> Next, we choose any available stain uh, available to us, and uh, we measure them. So we take a photograph of each stain to determine the impact angle. We put our 3D scanner against the wall to determine the volume. We put it in our equation, and we get the impact velocity back. And of all those patterns, I want to show you one example. And here we have a wall, and on the wall there are 31 stains. And the big blue dot is where they really came from. It was the location of our uh, blood pool where the hammer struck it. Now first, let me show you this stringing method. So if we draw all these straight lines um, together, we'll get an, an origin, the, bl the little black dot, with an uh, uncertainty. And we say, OK, this is the area where the blood came from. Well, you can already see that the blue dot does not overlap with our sphere. So we're overestimating the height. Now what will happen if we take the impact velocity into account? And if we determine uh, the effect of gravity, well, all the lines will go down. And what you see now is that uh, our big uh, green sphere overlaps very precisely with our blue dot. So we can determine where it came from very, very accurately. And already in this case, we could say it makes the difference between a uh, sitting and standing person. So by applying fluid dynamics uh, to bloodstain pattern analysis, we are able to uh, determine the origin very accurately. And this might uh, improve the proceedings uh, on the crime scene. This might be uh, a way to uh, determine what has happened way better uh, than the current methods that are being applied.
And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blood. <laughs> who, who has a question from the audience? Uh, a few. I, I'm only going to do one, because if you want to know more, uh, if, you wanna ha if you have more questions, there is a program in the Media Cafe <laughs> where Nick will be uh, available for you. So. Uh, on glass or stain, does something different than on a cardboard wall? So, um, there are a lot of different kinds of surfaces. So, if you come in a normal kitchen, you will have uh, stainless steel, uh, you'll have uh, some wood maybe, some tiles, and each surface is different, of course. And we have to take, we can take the surface into account. So on glass, it's so-called uh, hydrophilic, and fluids really like to be spread out on glass. Well, we can take this into account, I'm not showing it here. And for other stuff, um, we, are, we are able to take everything uh, into account and determine it very accurately. I, I have one question. Yeah. Why did you become interested in this topic? Um, it's because of my mother. Oh. Yeah, okay. um, uh, uh -oh. I, w I was studying in physics and uh, once upon a time she came to me with a uh, newspaper uh, clipping about the study of forensic science and at that po moment I said, okay, this is what I really want to do and, and then the ball started rolling and, I, and now I'm here. So, so his mother, okay. <laughs> and what do you hope to accomplish with, with your uh, studies? Because you're still doing your, you, you're doing your PhD at the moment, but what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I hope that uh, this, this research will be applied uh, throughout Holland and actually throughout the entire world and that everyone will use this method and that we will be able to uh, determine what has happened, to uh, determine the offense on a crime scene uh, much better and uh, to get rid of stuff like miscarriages of justice. That's idealist, very uh, ambitious. <laughs> uh, you told me that you uh, really like this topic. What, what, are you so what is so interesting to you about, about blood and this research? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's uh, kind of intriguing that you so uh, scientifically look to something that is normally a cause that is really uh, emotional and really uh, violent. And I like this way of looking to something so um, completely uh, violent and, and emotional in, in just a, uh, this, this uh, scientific way. So that's why I like it. Yeah. And I also like, so you start from one point and then every step you take, you explain very well. And it, it opens my, my mind with every step a little bit more. So was, I liked it very much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think the program in the Stad Schaubourg is almost starting. Um, if you have more questions for Nick, so please go to the uh, Media Cafe. Not only Nick will be there to answer questions, but also uh, Judy, who's still sitting at the back. She's also going to be there. Nick, thank you very much. Let's give uh, one more applause. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, and